um, closer to eight. Perfect. So we just got to keep track of who's coming on because there'll be some people coming on later. Um, let me see. Let me want to look at view here for real quick. See who's all here. All right, that's much better. Good evening, everybody. What's today? April, April uh, 9th, two thousand twenty-two. Yep. Um, we're celebrating Earth Day, Earth Month, and uh, one of our projects, one of the projects that Central Ohio has, is um, WGRN. And I believe it's their sixth year. Am I right? I think it's six. It seems seems like they've been with us forever, um, but no, only six years. So, so mm -hmm. let's honor that 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 tradition and heritage, and uh, hopefully legacy that we're uh, building for Central Ohio with, with WGRN's uh, uh, programming and personality. Uh, it's great. Um, so yeah, we're talking. Earth Day, Earth Politics, Ecological Balance. Uh, free Press came out of that whole movement. A lot of the folks that were involved with the early anti-war stuff, that they, they were organizers of the original Earth Day, 1970, right, in Columbus. Um, that then led into the student activism as well that was going on um, up at Ohio State uh, later that month. Uh, in 26, April 26, uh, you know, that's six days later. Uh, so Earth Day, everybody knows, what day is it? Everybody know? Anybody? It's in 22nd. April. Say, 22nd? Anybody else? That's what it is. Okay. So that there are different days sometimes. I mean, they, it, it is, is it a, a lunar related or how it was it defined, uh, uh, Tim? Do you want to introduce that? concept as well or do we just want to get into WGRN um, I really wanted to say though free press over the years has um, been involved with ecological uh, movement forever so we've covered it we've helped organize things you know so it's it's sort of a this is a good, it's close to the heart type of struggle and, and movement that we want to be uh, recording as good journalists, right? So, uh, Tim, uh, you're going to speak a little bit. Is that Suzanne? We said we wanted Tim to go first and then the rest will flow with the WGRN and Earth, Earth Day. Sure. Are you happy? Okay. Tim, you ready? Tim, you're muted, I think. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. I think, I think we want to give you probably a good uh, 40, 45 minutes. You know, so to... <laughs> not, not, not just for Tim. <laughs> no, not Tim. That's right. No, the whole, the whole uh, kitten. No, let's see, let's see question. who I can see here on the on the Zoom. Uh, Suzanne Patzer. Uh, uh, we have Felice Thomas. We have Marilyn and Juanita. But we, I think we should give a little bit of history here at the beginning and a little bit of a set setup okay. if, you, if you don't mind. All right. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. Um, so back in the in the day when when uh, when WCRS was our only community radio station here in Columbus, uh, Eugene Beer put in some more uh, applications to the FCC to try to get low power licenses, more of them here in Columbus, and that's what's the beginning of WGRN, and. We called it WGRN because we intended to be an, an environmentally oriented radio station, which, you know, what GRN, but we also decided to be a very female oriented radio station. So since many of the people involved uh, were female, we, we have a lot of female producers. We had a lot of females on the board. We have females who are helping learn the, you know, the whole producing and Back end technical part of it, we feel like we uh, have some, you know, a good space there to ask, say that we're very women oriented programming and operations by women at our station. But obviously, there's men involved too, Tim being one of them. But I just want to give a shout out to Victoria Parks, 
who without Victoria Parks, those of you who are familiar with her, local folk singer and activist, she's the one that really brought WGRN to the broadcast air, finally in 2016 on Earth, well, somewhere around Earth Day. It wasn't necessarily right on Earth Day, but it was very close to Earth Day. So that was appropriate since we were, we called ourselves the Green Renaissance radio station. So thanks to Victoria, we have a lot of very diverse and exciting programming. And that's what Tim's going to tell us about because Tim took over the scheduling and programming from Victoria a few years ago. So yeah, just tell us about uh, that. Yeah, uh, uh, first I'd like to uh, um, thank Mark for uh, making this arrangement, but this uh, is the uh, the WGRA and Earth Day birthday, which uh, we claim Earth Day to be our, our birthday for the radio station. I've been with the radio station for about four years. Jamie's been helping me. Jamie Pardo has been helping me with the uh, programming also. He's been doing that for about two years. And uh, we are, WGRN is a uh, Pacifica affiliate. Um, our um, uh, flagship uh, show is Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. And then, of course, we have Tom Hartman in the afternoon. Those are the national shows. And there's many other national shows. Brad, The broadcast, uh, Rob Call with uh, Bottom Up Radio. And um, really, you just really need to go into our website and check out all the shows that you could, because uh, if you want to listen to them or if you want to know more about a producer that's national, that has a website, you could basically listen to all, an archive of their uh, podcasts. But on top of that, the most exciting thing is, is that we do have a lot of local shows. And um, they, uh, at one time, I believe we had 30. I don't know how many we have now because I haven't counted them lately. The pandemic got knocked off a few, but uh, others have come back. And uh, it's very diverse as far as like during the week, we have um, um, uh, news and public affairs during the day. And we uh, attempted music during the night which we have some great programming, uh, uh, national and local uh, uh, productions of uh, on the radio station. And uh, it, it's all volunteer. Uh, we're able to keep the radio station going because it is an all volunteer group. And uh, we always would welcome any type of volunteer that wants to come in and participate in the radio station as a worker uh, in the back end of it, or maybe as a producer. So um, there's a big opportunity here. You have to sort of realize is that uh, we put out a different type of message. We tell the truth. And uh, if you um, are from rural um, Ohio or rural USA, basically is that uh, the AM stations and FM stations have been uh, bought out by uh, some uh, very strongly political money interest. And they put out one message and one message only. And uh, we need to really gather up what our resources are and not worry about them and try to get our message of truth out because uh, it leads to uh, having people that uh, elect people elected that uh, care for community. And this is a community radio station. And I ask all of you to please join if you'd like to learn something about radio. It's uh, something that people pay a lot of money to do, and it's basically be wide open for you to be able to participate in it. And um, I don't know, Suzanne, would you like to go through some of our uh, programmers that are here on the Zoom? Um, I'd like to hear from them, that's for sure. See what uh, their experience has been. Let's start with uh, Felice Thomas that I see here that she hey, might Felice. have limited time, Felice. Okay. All right, how you guys doing? It's, yeah, we need to do this more often, okay? To support each other. Can you guys hear me pretty good? Yep, we can no. hear you. Yep. Um, Thank you. In regards to when COVID came about, of course, uh, it was all, you know, hard to try to figure out what to do, but we worked our way through it. Um, we still strive towards um, trying to get our shows on. Sometimes we're successful with uh, booking guests and sometimes it becomes kind of hard. But needless to say, the sale came about because I happened to be uh, being interviewed by Julie and Susan was sitting there and I did not know who Susan was. 
And then Julie, after the end of the show, Julie goes, hey, you know, you ought to consider um, talking about sickle cell, you know, getting your own show. And I'm like, who, me? You know, because I've never dealt with radio. But needless to say, I don't know how many years, Susan, have we been doing this about? I think so. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been about three or four years. Um, And basically what we do is the cell, which is sickle cell deals with blood. So we came up with naming our radio show The Cell because no matter what, uh, nobody, nobody can actually live unless you have, you know, you receive blood and of course you know bloods are cells and that's how we came up with the cell so we do talk about sickle cell but however i feel sickle cell patients suffer from every type of situation and disease as everyone else in addition to that affliction so our platform is to give uh, local state and national organizations an opportunity to come on our show and share with us the type of services and program that they provide to the community. Because we feel that once again, it's not only about sickle cell, but it's about everyone. So we try to um, make it in, you know, inclusive to everyone and our, our subject matters. It could be about trafficking. It could be about diabetes. It could be about cancer. Uh, matter of fact, we're get, we just produced a show with the fire department and they tell us, they, the subject matter was telling us everything that they did in addition to 991 calls. So just feel it's important to get that information out there to the community. Um, something different is what we try to approach it as. So I'm having a good time with it. I never thought that I would be producing a show. <laughs> but um, without Susan's help, and her husband there's been plenty of times that we were stuck trying to figure out what to do but susan you have been great with us and victoria was great too when we first came on board so i want to thank susan i want to thank bob and i want to thank julie uh, for taking us up under your wing Uh, we probably would not be here if it was not for the four of you you know, leading us through and guiding us through. So thank you. What about your great crew? Uh, yeah. The people that have been helping you make your show all those years. <laughs> Ernie, At least when we were yeah. out back, they were really great. <laughs> Katie was really great. Um, Katie uh, is now a mother. So she has, you know, um, a son that, you know, ended up uh, kind of came with the packet and then she has her own son and I think he's about close to a year now so it's really uh me and Ernie and I have two other board members that act me and Ernie actually produce and you know edit the shows and stuff like that but um yeah we used to have some fun back there we still try to have fun you know a lot of I we try to get a lot of laughing and I I really enjoy Bob when he was on there uh talking about his show Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know about Jeff Estee. <laughs> and <laughs> they were like telling me to get back on topic. And I'm like, uh-uh, I wanted, I think Bob has something to do with that. And I want to know, give me the dirt, Bob. <laughs> so that was one of my favorite shows <laughs> is that I could not wait to ask him about, cause that's what he was, I don't know if he had killed himself by that time or you know whatever the case was but i i really enjoyed that thank you bob you gave me the inside straight of what was going on (laughs) yeah oh and just to let uh everyone know the faith thomas foundation we actually have two community health fairs that we put on a year um we have one may 11th and this is actually in the school system And it's a blood drive in addition to that. I got vendors that were um, customers from first grade up to graduation. So I got various vendors coming in where we're going to separate it by age group. And it's called knowledge is power, you know, because every vendor that is out there is providing some type of knowledge. And I believe in helping empower the community. And then we have one at Lowe's. So if WGRN would like to come out and join us at Lowe's, you're more than welcome to. If you're not doing another fair someplace else, that's the outside fair and it's a community engagement fair. 
We also do a bowling event, which is June 25th. And it's always at Columbus Bowling Palace. So when I get that, I'll send an email out to everybody. And then we do a big fundraiser on September the 9th uh, for OSU and Nationwide Children's Hospital for their sickle cell program. So that's our biggest event of the year. And um, love just, you know, trying to help those improve the quality of life of those living with sickle cell. So thank you guys. Yeah, I miss seeing you. Yeah, I miss seeing you guys too, bugging you guys that, hey, Bob, we can't get this thing over here. <laughs> Hey, Susan, where are you at? <laughs> yeah. and, and then we used to run into you at Lowe's every yes, once in a while, too. Yes, yes. Well, I'm glad you guys have kept it up. I'm really am proud of you to, for keeping the show going. Thank you so much. Like you said, it becomes challenging at times, you know. So you guys that are uh, on w dealing with WGRN, don't be surprised if you get an email from me asking me asking you to come onto our show and share what it is that your radio program is about. So I hope you say yes when I do send the email out. That's great. Well, thank you, Felice. Thank you. Hey, Julie, are you still there? I know you have some limited time going on too. Do you wanna go next? No, I'm fine. I, I have rehearsal from two to six. We rest and got relaxed so I can, be with the meeting. I know that means no, I don't want to go next. Hi, Julie. You, you don't want to go next? <laughs> no? Okay, we can go to someone else. Carol Harding is here. Carolyn Harding? You're muted. There we go. Hey everybody, um, great to see you all. Hi Bob, hi Susan. I, I kind of took a look at, saw there's a lot of people on this and uh, ah, yeah, Grassroot Ohio, going on uh, past its third year. And uh, thanks to Suzanne, to Tim, to Jamie. And uh, we've interviewed a lot of incredible activists and people that have, are leading out and it's feeding me it's fed me and i hope i hope people are listening um i think it's helped the activists because it gives them you know some a platform um and their their story is being told um it's still every week i feel like there's about 10 shows i could do time wise i don't but um i have about five more in my mind coming up but um, Suzanne, did you want me to talk or do you want to ask me questions? How, do, how does it work? I think you want to describe your show, what inspired you to do it, the type of things people can hear on it. You always, you always do such a good job of promoting it so where people could find out what's going to be on. And then we'd like to hear about you and your campaign. OK, all right. Um, well, I, I'm online a lot and I, I'm in groups of a lot of activists, so I kind of hear what's going on and, and, and if I feel like I'm interested and want to know more, then I will reach out to these folks. And um, there's a lot of things going on that I haven't covered yet, um, but I have expanded so much. I got started mostly because of the Columbus Community Bill of Rights and our work to give citizens the right to say no to this frack waste dumping in our watershed and our landfills. And um, Suzanne asked me, and I said, do you want me to do it environmental just? And she said, I said, what about social justice, racial justice, economic justice? And she said, sure, let's do it. So it gave me the opportunity to reach out to activists that I really didn't know a lot about their work and have grown a whole lot, learned a lot from interviewing these activists. It's been very humbling and some of the stories are very sensitive. Um, and it's given me a great deal of respect for um, activists. Activists give me great hope. And um, so um, I kept, you know, we, we're all knocking on the doors of the state house or city, city hall and we're all getting, you know, so we're getting some movement. Some people are getting more movement than others. But as most of you know, 
you know, the state house has been pretty much preempted by preemption, state preemption, big corp coming in and, and helping lawmakers make law that keeps um, citizens out of the out of the um, citizen initiatives and referendums it kind of it kind of keeps us handcuffed. So anyways, um, I decided to run for public office um, because I felt that I should for the issues. Um, and, you know, I'm not experienced. I am a ward representative in Bexley because of Rep Your Block, because of activists. And we weren't very welcomed into the um, Franklin County Democratic Party and still are considered interlopers. But, um, and I will be considered an interloper probably on all sides in this run. Um, but I'm running for climate action. I'm running for women's reproductive rights. I'm running tell for- us, Tell us what seat you're running for and where. Okay. Well, um, I'm running for a state rep and it was Kristen Boggs, former, um, district. It was 18. And then for a while in the gerrymandered seat um, districts, it was one, but we don't know what it is yet. And um, it was kind of classically um, around the airport, Bexley, down Broad Street, downtown into German Village, and then um, maybe a bit um, north of Broad Street or south of Broad Street. I'm not sure where it's going to be. Um, and I may be, I may be um, primarying a very popular and um, I, a good guy. Um, so um, it'll be focused on the issues and um, to wait, raise awareness and get people moving about climate action, about protecting our water, air, and soil, about human rights, women's rights, reproductive rights, LGBTQI, um, BIPOC rights, and then of course, all the other pro progressive stuff, you know, Medicare for all and uh, good public schools and um, uh, minimum wage, $15. So I'm gonna just fight for issues and knock on doors. And it's the first time I've done it, so much to learn and um, just taking it one step at a time. And my website, will be up and running by Monday. It's up, but it's uh, it's still being worked on and it's hardingforohio.com. And uh, so I'm definitely, uh, definitely uh, don't have any real big group except for activists maybe that are rooting for me um, because I will, I will be bringing the issues to the state house and I will be a voice for for um, getting rid of um, qu qualitative, or was it? and now it's just going on police accountability, police accountability, and um, but you know my background is environmental, so I will definitely be working on that as well as reproductive rights and trans rights and education and Medicare for all. So I'm not, I'm brave, I'm resourceful. I am diligent and I finish in honor what I say I'm going to do. So um, um, if you guys are in my district, I'd love to have your support. I'd love to have volunteers because I'm really going to knock on doors. I want to meet the people. I want to knock on doors. I want volunteers to knock on doors. I. Um, it's not going to be a slick campaign campaign with lots of money, lots of big fundraisers. I'm going to count on the people and volunteers. So um, how come I can't remember? It's about um, holding police accountability. Um, in civil ending, ending qualified immunity. Yeah, qualified immunity. That's the word. That the, seems to be the issue that so many of my activist friends have said would be a huge step. I'm also very interested in ranked choice voting. I will definitely support that. Um, so yeah, I'm way more left than the Democratic Party and they're all a little nervous about me and I refuse to be endorsed because I don't believe in being endorsed in a primary. 
So, um, so <laughs> they don't know what to do with me, but um, I'm gonna go in if I can. And even if we can debate and really talk about the issues. And I think democracy is better when there's a debate and when there's a choice rather than just being appointed or cherry picked by the top, which is happens all the time, as you all know that. Okay. Um, and Grassroot Ohio, I've been allowing myself to do rebroadcasts with great shows and I've got a great series going on, um, Death by Democracy that Bill um, Lyons, um, he wrote a chapter in there and it's about all the different communities in Ohio that have um, been working on bills of rights and how state preemption and the judicial system and you know cities have all you know tried to stop it but we're not done we're not done so um i'm jumping into the political world and it makes me nervous because i really like the world of artist activist because i come from the arts and um and i love being an activist um but i i feel like we need someone inside who will you know, fight, literally fight for the issues. So that's my pitch and I need help knocking on doors. So in, and money, cause I wanna pay my treasurer who is Greg Pace. And I want to pay, if I, if I have to hire, you know, a, a part-time person, I wanna pay them and definitely no less than $15 an hour, hopefully more. And uh, we've got to pay for, you know, you know, palm cards, they're called postcards, and I'm putting my recycle button on them. And uh, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. And it's going to be a tough one, because if I have to, um, if I am debating or uh, running against, uh, it would might be Dontavious Geralds, and he's very popular and very likable. And he's good, so um, I could easily become the villain. So um, I'm going to just stay on the issues. Well, it's interesting because every issue that you mentioned that you're going to talk about on your campaign are issues that you've covered on Grassroots Ohio. Yeah, oh. you're right. Well, I was interested in them, and so I sought sought out, mm -hmm. you know, the people that are working on it that know a lot. And, um, and I will continue to do that. I'm not sure how, uh, how I'll be able to continue grassroots if I'm a last legislator, because that seems like a conflict of interest. I might have to become a different kind I of- I don't think so. I no? don't think so. Charlita Tavares had a show on um, Talktainment. Didn't she, Bob, the whole time she was in office? Wasn't she in office still then? Yeah, yeah and Bob? you just can do advocacy directly. Right. Yeah, I mean, and we're a nonprofit station and, and it's non-commercial and it's low power FM. I think that if you wanted to continue your show, it'd be a great public service. I used to work at public access TV and, and elected officials used to do TV shows on cable. Okay. Or access channel. So well, I think you're allowed. I'd love to be able to be, have the grassroots activists have a direct contact with them. And so their issues get elevated. I would love that. So if that's not a conflict, I would like to continue. And I just want to say the first time I ever met Esther Flores was because of your show. And that's how we got involved in all her issues. And sadly, and the anniversary just passed, I think it was the last time I saw Ruben. Yeah. Was when he was back there in our studio. Yeah. Doing your show. Yeah, we, we recorded that show I mean, almost like five days before he passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was one of the first, well, one of the, in the first month. Yeah. yeah, I noticed on Facebook that people were talking about it being like, how many years ago? Five years ago, maybe. Or, I don't know. I don't think it's been that long. No, three, three, three years ago. Three years, three years ago. ago. Yeah. So we all miss you, Ben. But thank you, Carolyn. I'm so glad you started doing a show on the channel and. Part of the reason why you're so great is because you put those Facebook messages out telling everybody, watch Grassroot Ohio and telling us all who's going to be on it. And you make a nice little image there. And I think that really helps promote WGRN. So we're very grateful for that. Well, I'm very grateful to WGRN, to you, Suzanne, for believing in me and teaching me and Tim 
and Jamie and um, all the all the folks in the very beginning. And um, right, and I, group hug, group hug. Come on, group hug. Come on. Yeah, group, group hug. hug is right. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Carolyn. Your, Thank you, your, guys. Your last name doesn't help anything in Ohio. I'm saying, like, geez. Yeah, no. Now. You should get like 30 percent right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. He's a bit <laughs> infamous. I have a I great, know. I have a great show though on Grassroot Ohio. For, for my friends, it's called Warren G. Harding and Me. And I really did a lot of thought on that and, and wrote wrote that. And uh, it really kind of like puts it into perspective, having an infamous uh, relative uh, and um, yet very famous at the same time. Yeah. So check it out. Grassroot Ohio, you can find me on SoundCloud, on Apple Podcast, on Spotify, YouTube. And uh, let's see what else. Um, I think that's I it. it. I listened to it. And if you can't find it from what she just listed, uh, we need to run a class, Suzanne, uh, how, how how some other folks come to Salon won't be able to make connection there. That, that Yes, we should know how to connect with you, uh, Carolyn. Thank, and good luck on that. I would say just in in reservation, are we done with producers? I'm not sure. No, we, no. In okay. fact, I was also going to say, Carolyn, if you want people to get a hold of you, yeah, that's what if I was they going want to volunteer, do you want to, I don't know if you have, can see the chat or we could put something in the chat there. Yeah, it's easy. Harding4Ohio.com. Yeah. Harding4Ohio.com. Yeah, Harding4Ohio. And if anybody throughout the whole salon, if you have things that you're wanting to be documented and you want it, Put it into the chat, and um, Suzanne does this great review of what happens at salons, and uh, she'll you'll be able to like link and go. It, it, it's beautiful recall of what we talk about today. So, um, okay, that's right. And uh, and Felice mentioned a lot of events that she has coming up too. So we'll yes, we'll include all those in there too, even though I don't think they got put in the chat. But I can get all those all those uh, dates and events from her as well. She didn't mention it, but it is her daughter, Faith Thomas, who she uh, unfortunately lost to sickle cell anemia. And that's why she started her nonprofit organization. And she's been doing it for, I don't know, many, many years since then. So anyway, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for the comment. In. And, chat. and I, I will get, I'll copy the chat so that I can reach out to those of you who are interested in connecting. Thanks a lot. All right, bye. Now I'm wondering, Julie, are you ready yet? Now that I've got a chance to eat my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, I told you I've been out and running since all day and came well, you know, from the rehearsal and stuff and it's like, Soon as you said my name, I had just cracked this bag open. Like, no, I'm not ready. All right, yet. sorry. <laughs> so tell Hello, us everybody. About, tell us about yourself, your show, and what all the everything that's going on with your, your theater productions. Hello, everybody. It's good to see some of you that I haven't seen in a while in person, and some that I'm first seeing for the first time. Uh, I love uh, WGRN. Hey, lean in there, Bob. Hi, sweetie. I haven't seen you in a minute, too. Good to see you, too. All right. <laughs> Thank you. To the people, uh, Susan, they were talking earlier about somebody that helped uh, uh, teach us. Uh, you was one of those people that, that uh, taught me. Uh, Victoria, Vicky was one of, Victoria was one of those that help me learn the, uh, how to use the program. And so thanks for your patience with that. Because I already knew how to be a ready radio personality, but I did not know how to actually produce my own shows, something that I had always wanted to do. So I thank you too for uh, giving me that opportunity uh, to be able to uh, produce my own shows and learn uh, the, the ropes, because I am a techie girl and I like to learn how to do stuff like that. Uh, I have uh, two shows. Oh, and Tim, Tim, my background. He, thank you, Tim. You always got me. He'll send me that text when I'm running around like, hey, where's this show? Oh, 
oh shoot, here it comes, Tim, you know, <laughs> or, or go in. So uh, without Tim, um, yeah, thank you so much, Tim. I, I appreciate you so much uh, for being able to, at the last minute, just pull one of my old ones up or, you know, and put it in there and, and just being on top of that game. Uh, to make sure that our shows are in there or, or just checking to see like what's going on. You, you know, what, where is it? Uh, Cause I do a lot of stuff. So you're being on top of that helps me be on top of my game uh, to make sure that things are produced. So thank you so much, Tim. I really appreciate that, that effort. And I know that time that you volunteer in doing that uh, to help me make sure that I have a show. I have a show that's on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, my show is Julie Whitney Scott Presents. And at different times, I present different things. I've presented music, I've presented book art, authors, whatever. But when the pandemic started, uh, since I am into theater, I decided uh, how could we, uh, we was, you know, just losing contact with each other as a theater community. And that's when I went to Julie Whitney Scott's and this time I switched it to now I was presenting uh, Let's Talk Theater. So I'm interviewing uh, theater people in the community, uh, bringing uh, them, the actors, producers, writers, that kind of thing on my uh, Tuesday show. Um, and of course, you know, since anybody knows me, uh, Carolyn, you know, man, we the activists, we're going to make sure that our show is also being a uh, very uh, timely talking about issues uh, that relate in the theater world that need to be dressed, addressed uh, socially, racially, economically, uh, the DEI uh, in theater, in Central uh, Community, uh, Ohio, as well as the entertainment part and, and all that. Uh, so um, that's been going really well now. Uh, so well, I wanted to switch but it's going so well, you know, on people. So I'm just going to keep on doing it um, for a while until I get tired of it. Unfortunately, that's that ABC piece of me. That's why I named my show Julie Whitney Scott Presents, because it's whatever I feel like presenting when I feel like presenting it. <laughs> so uh, and that may change <laughs> depending on what's going on or what I feel is most significant or, or that needs to be uh, discussed or, or talked about. And then I also do the radio uh, Sunday because I am so busy uh, with uh, radio and theater. Uh, I, teach, I teach with CATCO. So I do so many things that, and I also appreciate this, Susan and Bob, that I have the, uh, the satin flow. So I can just do music. <laughs> And you know that that's my show that it's just relaxing and there's nothing political, nothing like that. Uh, you know, because my brain needs a time to relax for the creativity to come to flow with my writing and, and acting and stuff like that. So set and flow gives me a, a chance to uh, relax my brain, have fun, uh, and uh, according to Tim, I have some good good uh, playlist going on on Sunday morning. So uh, so that, you know, that, and I try to go in every now and I think I, what I do, 10, I, I, about every month or so, I'll add a new playlist to it. And I, Tim, is this good? Because, you know, I go in there and I pull out and I remove things, you know, that aren't relevant. Like, you know, things that are really old or it's not, I don't want to be played again or as uh, it's holiday related or something like that. I, uh, you know, I go in there and I delete that out. So I have, you know, keep make sure there's room in there. No, you uh, keep but, some great, great, uh, great shows on your track list, and uh, they are uh, evergreen also. Okay, yeah, I forgot um, and that too. Mm -hmm. But tell us about the theater. What's happening this summer? Oh yeah, I the Columbus Black Theater Festival celebrates its tenth year this year. We're going to be two days at the Columbus Performing Arts Centers. Yay! It's been a while, it's a struggle, but it's still here and going strong. And it's going to be two days at the Abbey Theater uh, in Dublin, Ohio. I want to thank WGRN again and um, the Columbus Free Press, you know, for supporting me um, with that. 
Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I do what I do because I like to do it. So I appreciate anything anybody gives me, you know, as a as a blessing uh, in lieu or two of what I'm doing. So I really appreciate that uh, very much. I want you to know that. Uh, and even if you didn't do it, I'd still be doing my shows because, hey, I like to do that, too. I like to inform people and I think people need to be informed. If you don't tell people stuff, they don't know anything. So the festival is July the uh, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Like I said, two days at the uh, Performing Arts Center and two days at the Abbey Theater in Dublin, Ohio. And more, I'll be sending out more information for that and updating the flyers. We have six, we got seven plays, the playwrights. The playwrights that come to the Black Theater Festival come from all over the world. Um, in different places, we have uh, the plays are selected by uh, through a panel as a blind read. They don't know sex, creed, color, age, or anything of the plays uh, that are submitted. Uh, that's my way of making sure that the work is uh, chosen and picked based on quality of the work and the message of the work that matches my theme of the year. And this theme this year is, is speaking truth that heals. So, uh, cause you know, you do a lot of talking about things that are truthful, but everything we talk about stuff doesn't heal anybody. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just talk and, and there's things that are presented, but, and it's the truth, no doubt it's the truth, but it doesn't help other people heal. So the theme this year is speaking truth that heals. And so we have a lot of great playwrights that are um, that submitted work. We had over 100 submissions. We took that down. And like I said, we finally picked the um, seven that we're going to use this year. And the actors come from all over Central Ohio. The directors come all over from Central Ohio. The plays come from all over uh, the 50 states or wherever. And oh, this year, we got two Ohio people coming in. Uh, from uh, Kent. So I was really excited about that. Because like I said, we don't know who it is. One year, one year, this is the Columbus Black Theater Festival. One year, we had more white playwrights than we had black. And it's the Columbus Black Theater Festival. But that's the way it worked out. Because the plays <laughs> met the theme. And they were about, in order for it to, to be produced by me, it has to be real. Uh, it, unless you live in a certain community and you don't go outside of your community to shop or, or, or do, you know, do school or anything like that, then all you're going to see is your community. So we don't produce plays that are just in your community. <laughs> because the real world is we interact with all people. Once we step outside our doors, outside of what we are comfortable with in our little neighborhoods uh, that we was raised with, and the people that we were used to, once we step outside of that, we are now entering the world of all types of people, whether you interact with them or not, whether you like them or not, whether you socialize, sit down and talk to them, pass them by the street, that's life. So we make sure, so the plays have to represent that. It has to represent, which means that there has to be minorities in them. <laughs> there has to be gay people, maybe. There has to be transitional. Who knows? There has to be people, old people, seniors, young people. There has to be people. <laughs> These stories must represent people. So and we saw you. We saw you act in one of your plays a few years ago. So you're, you're quite the accomplished actress as well, aren't you? Uh, I try. So you were playing. You were playing. You know, a old that's lady. because of Mr. Inset. How many of you know Mr. Elder Inset? Huh? We are there. That's because of him. He asked me to one day to help uh, him out um, in a play in 2008, I think. They lost an actor. He said, "Julie, will you do that?" I was like, "I'm not an actor. I write. I produce. I direct." <laughs> and uh, he got me in front of that dag on uh, on that stage, and the history is made, you know, everybody be like, hey, Julie, because I don't seek out anything. 
That was a good play. You know, you enjoyed people, it. Yeah. I, right now, speaking of good plays, I'm directing a play for stage rights through actress. It's called The Almost Unbearable Glistening of the Onion Domes. And it's going to be next week at the Abbey Theater, the 14th, 15th, and 16th, guys. It's a really, really good play. It's set in an Orthodox uh, Christian church. And it's, oh, I can't tell you. It's really good. It's got a lot of different things going in it. And it's multicultural cast, multicultural <laughs> religions, you know, in my cast uh, that I picked. Uh, ages, you know, uh, our youngest is 13. Our oldest is 60 something years old. Uh, so we got a wide range in there. Uh, and if you're not doing anything, you might, you know, want to come out and check that out. It's $12 uh, for uh, tickets and um, you can find the information on um, my show. I also, for Let's Talk Theater, if you ever want to catch up on some of the uh, things that are going on in Columbus in regard to actors or theaters, writers, you can check that out. It's on uh, YouTube, uh, Julie Whitney Scott. Um, and it's a, it's called <laughs> Let's Talk Theater, uh, Julie Whitney Scott. And I try to put that on our WGR and page. I do everything I can to promote WGRN. Uh, because, you know, like I said, it's I do it because I like it, but I also feel that anything that I'm involved in, I should help promote. Uh, I, you know, I put the time in here to do this, this, this hard work, especially in my busy schedule, so I make a commitment that you will do this show, you know, like right now while we're talking on one screen, I'm looking at you on this monitor and on this monitor over here, I'm already working on uh, the radio show this you know editing that as well as the video for uh youtube and so it's one of those things that i feel like uh i just don't take for granted that people are going to hear my show i don't take for granted that people are just going to know that wgrn is out there you know and that you can go to wgrn.org or that you can go to wg yeah you got a radio you just 94.1 i don't take it for granted that people are going to know about something I care about. I care about WGRN. You are oh, one of the ones go. that does, you do a great job promoting your show. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And anything you want me to send out in the after salon email, if I can get that info, I'll include all the details. And then I send that email out to everybody and post it on our free press site. Cool. After the fact, so we can promote the event next weekend as well as the the festival uh, in July. So that's all I got to say, guys. Once again, it's good to see you. And uh, we miss yeah. you. We miss seeing you. We got one more show, uh, producer show for producers to talk about. Then we're going to give out our award this evening to our outstanding volunteer of the year, Eugene Beer. So we'll have Juanita and we'll have uh, Marilyn talk right now about the pink pill, and then we'll go into our award. Marilyn and Juanita are still there. Yep, I'm here. Yep. Oh, can yep. we see ya? Can we please see ya? Um, no, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> are you guys radio people? You not you don't want to be on video? I don't know. I can never uh, see. I have the face for radio. Oh, come on. I can't. I can't get. I, I can't get my video on. Can you see me oh, now? There you go. Yeah, we got you. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, Joan Jones, why don't you start? Okay. Um, the name of my show, uh, first of all, hello, everyone. Um, my real name is Juanita Brown. And um, I, on the show, I use the name Joan Jones. I learned from when I had a feminist group. Uh, I used to have meetings at um, the library and I was silly enough to put my real name in the paper and my phone number and I would get strange calls from men uh, that wanted to argue with me about feminism. So, um, but okay, the, the name of the show is The Pink Pill. Uh, it, it's really supposed to be about uh, feminism. And uh, at least that was the original intent. But 
due to you know what the country was going through with the Trump administration and, and the, the rise in hate crimes, uh, the, the overt displays of misogyny, we kind of branched off in all different directions. But um, our fundamental goal remains uh, that of uh, the advancement and protection of women's rights. Uh, and if you know, if you look at every problem that we have, it, it you know it affects women uh, often in a worse way. For example, the pandemic, um, you know, domestic violence went up during the pandemic. So it's things like that that you know that we need to pay attention to when uh, we're talking about women's rights. Um, of course, we may be in danger in June of losing our reproductive rights, which is just absolutely shocking. And it's painful to even talk about it, but we will be talking about it on our show. We have talked about it in the past, and I just can't believe it has come to this. But at any rate, uh, that's about it in a nutshell. Um, Except for your co-host. Except for your new co-host. Well, I was going to get turn it over <laughs> to her, and but before I give the mic over to Marilyn, um, I want to thank you and Dr. Suze and Dr. Bob for all that you've done for me as well. I I, I don't know. It's it's just been. I've said to Bob before. He's done for me what no psychiatrist has been able to do. <laughs> so I want to thank, thank you both. And um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Marilyn. Hey, Marilyn. Hi there. How you doing? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, I uh, was not originally on this show, but uh, I did a couple of shows with uh, Juanita and we had a good time and Suzanne said that she thought we were a good team. And so when she invited me on, I accepted it. Uh, as she mentioned, uh, the focus uh, was on, it was mostly on feminism, but because of the things that have been going on since um, the election of 2016, I think it was, uh, we've branched out quite a bit, but we, but all of the social problems, all of the issues and things, they impact uh, women and people of color in a disparate uh, uh, way. And so I don't think that we're too uh, far off the mark. Uh, we usually, we do a different topic every week. We sometimes uh, do less serious things. Last uh, week was pop culture week when we talked about the slap heard around the world. And having uh, taught pop culture, I know that's a serious, um, field of study, you get a master's degree in pop culture at uh, Bowling Green. So I, I didn't think that was out of line. Um, I too would like to thank uh, Bob and Suzanne. I've known Bob uh, since I think around 1991 or 92. And uh, of course I know Suzanne, they are two of the people who are the most dear to me in the entire world. Uh, and I thank them for facilitating our show, for being uh, good friends, for being activists, for being concerned about uh, what's going on in the world. And um, I would say that I am lucky and blessed to, to have them and, and Juanita in my life. And we hope that maybe some night, if you're not busy, you'll stop by and, and uh, listen to the show. And uh, thanks for having me. Yes. All right, thanks to you guys. Um, I guess we turn it over, Mark, now to Jamie, if Jamie's ready. Hi, Bob, I see you. <laughs> no, I don't teach now. Um, NSF post office. Remember when he said that? Uh, he said he didn't want to get up. He said, he didn't want to get up. Why did she say that? I can't hear her. What did they say? All right, we see the award and we hear you guys talk. What's going on? Okay, okay. Um, we, have we have a special, special surprise, surprise for, for WGRN. It, it being it, that it's it, birthday, it, it, Jamie, it, Jamie, it seemed only appropriate. Hey, you got an echo going. Jamie, one's going to have to kill the voice. One's going to have to kill the voice. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
Yes, somebody move on. And we'll use his. Yeah. So can you go over there, Jane? Or just share. No, I'll turn off. Jane's on and yours off. There you go. Now we got it. Thank you. Happy birthday to 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 you. All right. The problem with Zoom is it doesn't carry music well. So it's, it's, it's a done deal. I've been going to the day to the day Happy birthday. We weren't muted. Thank you. Oh, now mutures. Now mutures. And take the seat of honor, please. Okay, again, for those who missed it earlier. Well, no, but there's this. Okay. Shouldn't we get the focus because we're talking? You're doing great. You guys just go ahead with it. We can see Eugene and the award, but we can't see Jamie. Well, that's good. <laughs> Eugene, we're going to have to learn. I think there's to... trouble with the other computer. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, now, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was going to say. You froze up on the one, and I, I just want to say, you... okay, let's go. Oh, yeah. Okay, Jamie. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 We are okay. back. Jamie. We are back. So go ahead. So go ahead. Your turn okay. to talk, Jamie. Okay, so, okay, uh, so those uh, have been, those here. Have been here. Eugene has been, Eugene has been here. Wait a minute. Can I go over there? Go over there. Can I go over there? Go over okay. Let me turn this off and go over there. Okay. 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 Let's try this. Again. Let's try this. Again. There you go. Eugene has been a part of a neighborhood network that includes the Free Press, WCRS, from the very beginning of WGR. Okay, it would take a while to say everything he has done for WGRN. So just to summarize, Eugene got the low power FM licenses needed. He worked with the FCC and other engineers to get antennas, transmitters, and other technical equipment. Eugene has kept up the maintenance and needed paperwork. So congratulations. Eugene. There Thank you, you Jamie. Oh, it's a silver mic. <laughs> How about that? You'll have to read to us well, what it says on it. I want to use my two minutes here just to plug one great local show that WGRN airs every Saturday at 5 p.m. And that's local from Toledo. It's For a Green Future by Joe DeMar. Mm -hmm. And his show today featured him testifying before the Ohio um, Committee on Future Sources of Renew, quote, renewable power in Ohio, which they wanted to include nuclear. And so Joe testified as to all the problems with nuclear. And one of the problems he said was radiation, you know, it's a big problem. So then when they, when they uh, asked him questions, they said, so, Mr. DeMar, I understand you're afraid of radiation. Well, we use radiation to, to cure 50,000 medical people a year. 
And so that was the Republicans' rebuttal to his, uh, his concern about radiation. So he did a, a masterful job at countering the difference between a, a nuclear plant leaking radiation 24 hours a day and spewing it in the atmosphere and the winds covering hundreds of miles versus targeted radiation to a patient's body for 10 milliseconds or something. So it's a great show, Saturdays, 5 p.m. for a green future. And Victoria uh, knew Joe, knows Joe, and she got his show here in Columbus. So thank you, Victoria. Yay. We want to thank you, Eugene, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have anything happening on our broadcast channel at all. So please, please stick with us and help keep helping us out. And if anybody wants to be a volunteer with WGRN and actually learn some of the technical things and the aspects of it that Eugene knows, he could always use some assistance as well. Right now, Tim helps him a little bit, I think, and I don't know who else, but we really, really appreciate all your work, Eugene. Hold us up, hold us up that award again. Let's see what it says on it. Great. Higher, higher. Oh, too hard to read, but it says 20, 2022 uh, WGRN Community Radio Outstanding Volunteer Eugene Beer. So <laughs> that's just a token of our appreciation. Everybody, real quick announcement. We have to move the WGRN radio tower because the land is being purchased for real estate development. And we could use some help, you know, uh, probably toward the end of the year is when the move's going to happen. So um, it's going to be a big job, um, but I'll keep, I'll put, I'll post things on the website as to what kind of help we need. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, WCRS staff meeting also pointed that out this week. Um, so yes, if you have friends that have land, lots of land where we can put up a tower, hit Eugene up, hit Rob up, we need the space. <sighs> yeah, I'd like to say on that, on that note is that uh, WGRN can uh, always use a, a donation here and there. Our expenses are actually really low. Uh, this expense of moving the tower is going to be sort of high, so we need to uh, start generating some revenue to be able to, you know, bank it until the event that event happens. But you know, a nickel and a dime—that's all we need. Uh, just a little bit, just to keep it rolling, and uh, uh, we can keep this radio station on. Uh, and it's going to be very important in the election because there's going to be a lot of information. Uh, dissemination of information is just amazing now. And uh, we need to get the truth out there. We don't need to endorse anybody. Let's just get the truth out there and let's see what the, how they're going to go. So uh, that's the direction we need to go. I want to thank all the producers that spoke. And I appreciate Brian speaking up uh, because actually WCRS uses Eugene Beer. He's a very active volunteer for the, as the engineer for WCRS as well. And just as a last pitch, anybody who wants to be a producer on WGRN should contact us, either Tim or myself, if you could want us to start out maybe recording some PSAs and promos for us, which we just had uh, Connie Mixter do and a couple other people. We really appreciate that. And uh, or do your own full full show or do do you know a partial show maybe just a 15 minute show maybe a 10 minute show you can do whatever you want based on whatever your you know desires are to get the word out there. And I just wanted to also let you know that Earth Day itself is being celebrated with a little festival down at Genoa Park on April 23rd. And there will be a WCRS WGRN booth there. Hope to see you there, Brian. And uh, ComFest is gonna be in person again this year. And we had Mickey Pike wanted to jump in with a with an announcement real quick about that. But there'll also be a WGRN, WCRS booth at ComFest this year, in person, in real life. So what did you wanna say about that, Mickey? It was just a reminder that the street fair applications are due on 420, which is not too far away. So make sure you get them in. And then expect a reduction in stages. This year, we've had to cut back due to the increase of prices of actually putting on an event. So we're trying to cut back because we went two years without any kind of 
sizable income for the organization, but we were still giving away community grants as well as emergency funds for pandemic crises for volunteers. And people get those applications at comfest.com. 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 Click on the street fair link and there'll be a PDF file for the uh, street fair application. All right. Thank you. And see you June 24th, 25th, and 26th. Good Elk Park. Be there, or be square. Yes. Thanks. Well, that, wrap, that wraps up our Earth Day birthday celebration. Back to you, Mark Stansberry. No, back to the people. But no, listen, WGRN, thank you so much for the contribution of building what has been an image and a, a vision out there is to build a people's media center and having a very viable, I mean, six years, that, that's beyond most most organizations have, have already, you know, <laughs> had a heart attack and went belly up or whatever, but you guys are doing your thing. And, and But the backbone, the backbone of what we're talking about right now is the producers, those that produce the shows. So we have to always understand that. And um, thank you for exhibiting some of the, the beauty that is within the community that we're trying to build here in Central Ohio. Um, know the little bit that you may know about what we're trying to do, and maybe we know everything, I don't know. You know, there's a whole lot of different, there's a lot of different things coming through this community, the free press, uh, for years. I, I, I was building on our history when we first started uh, that, yeah, since the first Earth Day in uh, 1970, April, uh, to now, the free press community is very involved with environmental things. But, uh, Pat Morita uh, wants to speak a little bit about uh, on um, the state house actions that are going on, especially on 434. I don't know if she's up right now. Yeah, yeah. Hi, and congratulations to WGRN and uh, Earth Day. And uh, yeah, so um, uh, and to all the volunteers that are here, I'm so impressed. Um, I want to talk about Ohio House Bill 434 because I'm wearing my hat as a nuclear person, anti-nuclear person. Uh, this terrible bill has passed the Ohio House already. <clears throat> um, it would create a, a secretive new government agency called the Ohio Nuclear Development Authority. And this new nuclear agency would be placed under the Ohio Department of Development, which contracts its work out to Jobs Ohio. And so this and this new agency, or calling itself an authority, it, it would be able to raise and spend undisclosed amounts of taxpayer dollars, and it would be out of the reach of Ohio's open record laws. And one of the dangers of this bill too is that the whole idea of this concept could become emblazoned into law and move into other fields. Uh, we know at Jobs Ohio, we don't know exactly how much they gave everyone, but they gave Google $43 million, I've read, uh, in tax abatements for, uh, for their project in New Albany. Uh, and they guaranteed 50 jobs. And we don't know all the enticements that they might have given to Amgen Biotech or American Nitrile. And probably maybe many of you know, the, know those stories, but uh, we don't want anything that's so secretive to, to become law. The bill is 14 pages long, uh, and the first eight pages of this describe a really convoluted process for selecting the, the new nuclear authorities board members. And of course that's designed to circumvent outsiders from being on the governing body. And this bill, it's the brainchild of one small Cleveland company uh, and that name is E-Generation. And they are looking for money for research and development of so-called, we call advanced nuclear 
reactors, but we, we call them PowerPoint reactors because they're not built, they're untried and they're, they're untested. Uh, uh, so Wall Street won't, uh, won't fund really anything nuclear because uh, it's expensive and those plants take at least a decade to build. They have massive cost overruns and they're not competitive. And then as they define what they're doing as research, so their project doesn't have to show any useful results. And uh, if the process dies out, the company will have just profited from public handouts all the way along. So we say, well, what do they have to lose? Uh, it has references, a, a number of references to the US military and the Department of Defense. And as such, it presents a really dangerous commingling of nuclear power and weapons. And uh, the bill would allow Ohio to take ownership of radioactive waste. And that's something no state's ever done. And, and when that happens, federal regulatory control, as pitiful as it is, uh, over radioactive materials and radioactive waste, that control would be lost. So, uh, and the bill, in spite of denials by the sponsor, it does allow for the taking of private property. And they do so by calling the research an essential public service. This proposed research is an essential public service. So we don't know how long Ohioans will pay. We don't know how much we would end up paying. Uh, so this bill has already passed the House. It's soon going to be heard in the Senate committee. So I'm just asking everyone, I'm going to put something in the chat, the links. Please contact your Ohio senator. And I'm going to put a link in there for, uh, to the legislature where you can, if you don't know who your senator is, you can go to that link and find your senator by putting in your address. And I'm volunteering with the Ohio Nuclear Free Network. And our group has uh, outlined a lot of talking points, some of the things I've just been talking about. So I'll put that, I'll put a link to the talking points in the chat as well. And um, thanks everybody, uh, any, any questions? Um, well, thanks, uh, Pat. We're, I got Bill, Bill Lyons is gonna come on and talk about a little bit of what the charter, charter uh, review is going on and some of that stuff. But yeah, any any questions, please put things in chat and uh, any resources that you have, put, put them in the chat. It's it's great. I see things are getting put in there. It's very important. Um, let's see. It sounds, sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Yeah, everything's sounding pr pretty scary. Um, but hey, with community, we're going to make it work, okay? We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. Uh, oppose what you can. Build what, you, what, we, what we must. Um, Bill, Bill Lyons wants to bring a little bit of what's going on down at City Hall. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Pat, for bringing us what's a little bit of what's going on with State House. No, the State House is is total bazing, right? It's going on sort of politically off off the chains, uh, but it's getting not much done either. Uh, that's but what it is getting done is very, very delirious to people's rights. So um, now we're going to break into what's going on in City Hall a little bit. So Bill Lyons, please go ahead, please. Yeah. yeah. But thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. I'll try to be uh, very brief because we'll probably okay. have to say more about this as we see what develops in yeah. future media. Yeah, this but, is just sort of a, a drop, sort of a like a, what do you call it, a, an abstract of yeah. the, of the, the so, argument. Right. First of all, I put in uh, the uh, website for the Charter Review Commission, and, and a lot of people don't know that this is going about, but the Columbus City Charter has a commission that these people were appointed, and they've been meeting, and they've already had five meetings so far, no public input only having city officials testify about what they want to see changed in the Columbus City Charter. Uh, so yeah, and sorry to introduce myself then, because I know some of you know me and some of you don't. 
Bill Lyons and co-organizer Columbus Community Bill of Rights with Carolyn Harding and also president of the Ohio Community Rights Network. And I'm sure many of you have signed uh, our initiatives in the past and other uh, good citizen initiatives uh, locally as well as perhaps statewide there. So uh, the big thing that it's it's not the only thing, but the big thing that has alarmed uh, the city officials was the issue seven last November. You know, the, the green energy initiative that was uh, going to be uh, supposed to divert $87 million for uh, green energy projects. Uh, and it was defeated, defeated by an overwhelming margin of 87% to 13%. So, the city's uh, city attorney's office, and, and I've been monitoring this because I knew they're going to use this opportunity to try to put another nail in the, uh, you know, trying to put a yeah, nail in the coffin of citizen initiatives because they've already put uh, all kinds of obstacles in our way. So uh, they are trying to craft language and they've recommended to uh, prevent what they call self-dealing measures. And that's what they call issue seven because uh, they say that the people who sponsored it stood to make money off of it. So first of all, um, I don't know what they're afraid about because uh, they didn't want this to pass and it overwhelmingly, in fact, unprecedented, I think a record, 87% to 13% didn't pass. So what's their problem? Don't they trust the people? Well, no, they don't trust the people. And so they want to alter the language. And so um, let me just give you just a real quick um, heads up. OK, one of the things that they're doing is they're going to they want to put in a um, change to the charter to say that uh, uh, they want to prevent an initiative from creating a, quote, monopoly, oligopoly or cartel. And OK, this might sound reasonable, but then voters uh, will reject measures if they feel that that's the case. Uh, so, but the big problem is the other recommendations. And so what they wanna to do to the initiative process, and you know that Columbus Community Bill of Rights has had four initiatives and they have done nothing to help our democratic right of initiative at the state level. So what they wanna do is, okay, let me just give you an example at the, our last, initiative and we were collecting signatures for a charter amendment. So we had to collect 10% of those who voted in the last municipal election. Well, what they want to do is on top of that, uh, they want to make sure that the petitions will have uh, 5% of the uh, signatures of those who voted in five of nine uh, city council districts that are supposed to take effect next year. <laughs> so um, it, it, it's all uh, just going to add more complications. It's just an unnecessary uh, burden to the initiative process because most people won't know what district they're in. We're going to have to keep a, a count of and look up the address of every single person. We're going to have to uh, count how many we've got in the various districts. And it means that ultimately, we're probably gonna to have to get more signatures uh, for another initiative because we could easily meet the number, but then let's say that we've got people in all nine districts, but then we don't have five uh, districts where we have 5% for, for, uh, of, of signatures. So that means we'll have to go back and try to knock door to door or something. And uh, one of the, uh, here, here's their justification for this. Okay, so one of them, and I, I've been listening to the uh, general counsel for Zach Klein's office talk about this, is that they say, well, uh, this will prevent an initiative that's only uh, got signatures from a certain part of Columbus. Well, that's never going to happen. It's never happened because, as you know, the efficient way to collect signatures is you go to big festivals uh, where people come from all over, like Comfest and so forth, and and uh, you 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 so you get people from all over signing uh, petitions. 
objects. So that, that's a bogus claim, and it's just a, a hidden way of going to make it even harder for grassroots initiatives to make the ballot here. So uh, another justification they say is, well, this mirrors what you do at the state level, because if you have state initiatives, you not only have to collect, uh, say it's a, a charter amendment, you have to get 10% of the people who voted in the last gubernatorial election, but you have to get 5% from 44 out of 88 counties. Well, again, first of all, it's not analogous counties. People know what county they're in, but these new districts we could change and aren't well established. Uh, they won't know that. And secondly, to say that, well, this is just going to try to make us mirror the state. They put in uh, and recommended in 2014 a one year time limit for citizen initiatives, which no other city in Ohio has, and the state constitution says nothing about a one-year limit. So again, they're being hypocritical when they say that. And that is only just restricted our, our, our efforts. Uh, so this, uh, these are, I, I, and, and I'm just talking about for charter amendments, for initiated ordinance, but it's also true for initiated referendums uh, and recalls. So they want to do the same thing where they want to put in some district requirements. So you have to get a certain percent with five of nine districts. And that's what the recommended language is. Well, so, Bill, so thank, thank you. I, I, I mean, yeah, okay. you can give us, you can give us like a historical uh, re recall of everything. Um, okay. Yeah. What, so I know we're moving towards a restructuring a review it means there's going to be kind of a restructuring we already know it's going from as you said seven to nine mm -hmm. uh, council people uh, we just had a climate action plan put in place by the city uh herald by the city uh mayor uh, he, he's like putting it as one of his quivers in his in his uh whatever um but it was only done because of community people, you know, that, and and it got better. Uh, yeah, your 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 mentioning of how often you've had to you and Carolyn, I mean, and others that have have done, you know, so much so much work trying to even shake the branch of whatever democracy is <laughs> down there. Um, it's hard. I know we we got rejected back in the '70s with stuff it is hard to meld that city hall my mm -hmm. question with all the changes and everything there's there's a drive for diversity inclusion and and really an understanding of climate action more than it ha there has been within the the administration how can we maneuver this as a community how can we report what's going on you know, from the grassroots. I mean, we are we are a media center. We 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 have really thought of ourselves as developing uh, ways to communicate what's going on out there to the community at large, um, and that's a challenge a lot of times because some of our messages messages are not uh, very sanguine with the with the the powers that be. You know, sometimes so. So uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, Bill, do you want to say something last two seconds? But yeah, Joe sure. I wanted to raise up something. Yeah. Um, maybe first Joe go and then Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, thanks, Bill. And, and I just wanted everyone to know. Another, I listened to another herald of city power at, uh, uh, challenging. So there we go. Thank you. I uh, listened to the first two meetings, Bill, and was pretty outspoken about the fact of the meetings not even being announced within a 24 hour period of time. And I noticed the other, the last meeting, I think, was announced the same day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, getting to what you're saying, uh, I'm shocked to hear what you just reported on because I didn't know it was going in that direction. I mm -hmm. can't believe they're actually using uh, the, the type of formulas in order to try to get something passed. And I think. People really need to, they're doing this because nobody's paying attention. That's you know, right. It's like you said, no, nobody's attending these meetings. I think the first couple of meetings I listened to, there was maybe three people that were viewing them. Mm -hmm. And and I complained yep. to the city 
about, you know, why is it the public being allowed to participate in this? Right. And I pretty much got some, you know, BS response back from them that they were just going to take input from the city uh, officers and officials and so forth, as you said. But this is this is alarming as hell what you're what you're saying, because they are trying to silence and stop people from putting things on the ballot. That's what right. this is all about. Now yeah. I even have to wonder if if creating these districts was all part of the same scheme. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and you're 100 percent mm -hmm. correct. This was we saw this coming when uh, this ballot issue was put on there, and and they and their all their friends had to spend you know twenty five fifty thousand dollars to fight it on TV because they were all worried it might pass. Well, they don't want to get into their wallets for this kind of thing. They'd rather get into their wallets with campaign contributions. And this mm -hmm. is probably cutting into it a little bit. So, yeah, this is pretty alarming. And people need to understand what's going on here. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just uh, just real quick, Mark. There's so finish up for, for like two, three, four, 15 paragraphs, whatever. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've pretty much, you know, there's obviously, uh, I'll have more to say it in the future. But yes, uh, I put the link to the Charter Review Commission and Joe, they finally have a timeline of all their meetings. So they've already met five times and they've got a schedule of 11 and they only have two meetings where they say they're gonna have public input in May and June and they don't even say when that's going to be. So, and just one more thing, I've written an op-ed and I received word from the dispatch that they're gonna publish it soon. So look for that, so super, thanks. Super, super, thank you so much just these are just other examples of how our producers are connecting people with people with people with people and how our community just grows as we try to keep that uh we call ourselves contemporary journalists but you know that has a lot of different definitions uh, for different people but we try to keep a progressive voice out there for me i do i i, I try to understand that and I think most of us are thinking what progressive is. That's a challenge, um, especially in this time of, of war. I mean, when we're talking about, we're in the middle of experiencing another big, big, big blow up right now. And as a community, we haven't really talked about that, what that means to the climate. We've already, you know, we're in the midst of Earth Day uh, and we're gonna have a, a very large uh, impact on the climate uh, uh, right now with this war. Um, so there's, uh, we need to continue to talk to ourselves about how we want to react to things. How do we do things? And the, the reports, the, the, uh, uh, updates, the, the expressions of celebration for the sixth year of WGRN. Fantastic. Yay, 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 yay. Um, yeah, they, they came, I think, what, what year was it when y'all came to Barrick? I forget, but that, that was sort of fun too, that can't remember, but Suzanne, go ahead, please. Oh, I was just going to say, we got two other WGRN people that popped in, just board Perfect. members, not producers, but, uh, we got Michael Kokonis and Joe Keener. He's been here for a little while. Yeah. So, uh, just wanted to point out that, uh, and obviously already heard from Tim people that are involved with WGRN are here on the salon line. Also, Thank I wanted you. to say that um, Yuri, who spoke to us last last month from Kyiv, he was in Ukraine while there was shelling and sirens going on and talking to us at the salon. He recently uh, wrote something or has some kind of podcast, Mark. I don't know if you wanna send me his stuff so I could send that out with the email just so people can keep up with how he's doing. I've been a little worried about him <laughs> since since last month. Yeah. Well, just 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 let you know he he's like got nominated for some kind of award and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, he's he's uh he's become cause celebrate. No, I'm kidding. No, in the reality, I'm yes. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think he's protected enough uh right now especially because of the restructuring of the military operation that's going on uh he was in kiev and yeah or kiev and I, i'm still not quite sure when they changed that that term 
I'm an old man. So it was like Beijing and Peking, you know. When did they change those things? No, I'm teasing. I'm, I'm, and there's reasons because of that, right? Language, right? Language. And uh, thank you, everyone, for participating, I guess. Suzanne, did you mean that... Uh, Joe, did you want to say thing or anything? Um, uh, just uh, as I posted, we're having a rent control uh, meeting, public yeah. meeting at the library next Saturday at 2 p.m. from 2 to 4. And it's just to uh, you know let people know what the rent control is all about. I uh, want to hear input from, from the public in terms of what they'd like to see in legislation uh, for rent control, because it, it varies from city to city. They, you know, they say the devil's in the details. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're looking for compromise and trying to make the, you know, developers and landlords happy and small landlords. When you hear rent control, believe me, it's, it's not what most people think. I'm sorry, the main library. Thank you. Uh, so that's at the main library, 2 p.m. next Saturday. And uh, mentioned that last month as well. So yes, yeah. thanks for reminding us because it is coming up like soon, very now. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to have another meeting. I, I I forget the date, but I think it, it's in June, and that'll be our second meeting where we'll try to tie things down and try to get the legislation together. But what we would like to do is present this to the city first, you know. And of course, they're not going to go for it. But uh, it's very strong possibility that's going to be. Uh, on the ballot we're going to seek you know try to get signatures and have it placed on the ballot sounds like we're going to have to do it before these charter review committee votes on what or what they want to put on the ballot too. <laughs> my god so thanks well i i just want to say that i don't know if i you, joe you're you're blown up on my screen so i don't know if i can't see anything else but that thank you joe yourself you're 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 doing great um how to close this down a little bit. We've been on for a while. We usually don't go this late, right? We don't usually go this late. Folks, keep talking if you'd like to. I see, yeah, Jamie and, and, and everybody over there, they are starting to do what we're thinking we might want to start doing in a way is start doing subgrets, sub, subsets of subsets of subsets of people sort of gathering as a salon, you know, a political salon, this, the thought a long time ago uh, that has been around for millennia. Go ahead. Uh, it's not Jamie right now, but it's Eugene. Julie, had her, Julie Whitney Scott had her hand up. Julie? Julie Whitney, too. Okay, so go. Well, I this see a bunch just, of, uh, yeah, Julie. Oh, yeah, I see now, too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Julie, and then we'll do... Uh, Everybody over there. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Eugene. You deserve it. Thank you so much for all of your hard work, all of these years, and everything that you've done so that we can do what we do. Well, I, I love the satin flow. <laughs> and I also want to say, and I'll talk to you, Tim, about this. I have a play that I that was in the black the festival last year called that I wrote specifically for Earth Day called Stop Deforestation Now. And I want to talk to you because maybe I can fit it into the Sunday show uh, that we got. Is it this week, right? Is it this week we doing our Earth Day stuff? I don't know. This week we do what? It's Earth Day. Day. When, when is that? Is that this whole month? Or? Yeah, we can do it all month, Julie, and Earth Day's on like the 22nd. So. It's on the 22nd? Yeah. Yes, sir. You could do it the week in the first. Hey, so I want to do that as part of uh, let's talk theater, you know, because it was done on the stage, but we copied it. But it's about uh, you know, it's called Stop Deforestation Now, about our trees and you know how we're doing things to destroy it. It was a, a youth play I wrote uh, that was done uh, in the schools uh, with the uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So I'll talk to you guys on how we can do that, you know, to help promote Earth Day. Uh, you know, save our planet. <clears throat> and so I'll talk to you. I figured I'll probably, I don't know how to do it. I'll look and see how many minutes it is and make sure it gets out so that we can, you know, I'll start uh, running that uh, this month. Stop deforestation now. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And reforestation now. 
Okay. So anyway, we um we, we're just we're just so pleased that we have we get to have our man of the person or the or person of the uh the, the night here of yeah. uh, the year here. And so from everybody here, we're just gonna give these little flowers to um. Eugene. <laughs> Jean. And the flower buddy. And um Heather's over here too. Heather, you should peek in or something like that. So it's another person. But anyway, it's fun gather gather together, so I really highly recommend it. I think we all do. And just wanted to get that little bit more in. And I love this thing. I might end up taking it. <laughs> That's our secret. Don't tell anybody. But anyway, just want to, to get that in. And uh, we're just so happy that we're with the man of the year. The first of the year. So, so now the secret is told that to get the reward, you have to have a community behind you, right? So you have to, you can't just be watching the salon by yourself and stuff. You have to get people together so that they can like push. No, Eugene, I remember meeting you many, 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 many years ago, many years ago. And Yoshe loves the fact that you want, she even jumped over on top of me to listen when you were talking. So um thank you for the work that you've done and will hopefully will continue to do this you know these rewards always or awards whatever we call them um sometimes mark an ending but i, I always hope it marks a beginning you know people i'm christian i'm sorry people read revelations as an end but i always read it as a beginning okay so um <laughs> I don't want to take it to that point of what awards are, but sometimes people say, whew, I got an award and I'm done. No, please don't do it this way, okay? All right? Say that this is a great marker and we're moving forward, right? And find other people. We need to find other people to help you to build this 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 structure that we're trying to do. Um, and you're trying. You, you've been a heart of it. So thank you again for doing all this. Um, and all the producers that you've built a community on. I know you don't want. You're not a man for talking. You you want to go around just pedal around and do your thing. I know that. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Please. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank yep, you. Yep. Thank you. All right, so good, good. Anybody else? I see. Ha oh, Brian. Uh, yes, Brian has an announcement, probably WCRS, and uh, it is an issue that we need to talk about: is how to support the movement of this antenna thing. Exactly. We need to start like raising money, yeah. and don't stop after we get the tower, because we radio is not free um but yes um so we are gonna have a booth at tom fest and it was rob's request that wgrn provide some volunteer hours at because <laughs> not just the new service people or can we post, can we post up old. the tower brian can we get the tower to be posted up at Comfest to so have people see how long it has to be to even get a a reasonable uh and so this is why we're asking for that's somebody. a rob and eugene question <laughs> i think eugene just hung oh nope he's still here i'm just saying <laughs> wouldn't that be very dramatic i think that'd be dramatic oh yeah but yeah, oh, but yeah so I, have, I, I have a lot of fires to fight for example like back late night bus service to columbus which they're not doing. Uh, yeah yeah public comment meetings are First one 